In today's video, we're going to be looking at two new features available with Magic Leap's OpenXR implementation. The first one is going to be the Spatial Anchors API that is going to allow us to create anchors, remove anchors, and get anchors information. The second one is going to be the Spatial Anchors Storage API that is going to allow us to store these anchors in a persistent manner. This means that if we close the app and restore the app, we can actually restore the anchors and know exactly where they were placed initially. So we have a lot to do, so let's jump into my computer and start working on it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to open the Spaces application within the ML2 OS. Once you get it open, it's gonna tell you the areas that you need to approach, and then you have to rotate yourself. Once you rotate yourself, it's gonna tell you at some point when that area has been completely scanned, then you can approach the other areas by getting into the plus symbols, and then I'm gonna do the same thing one more time once you're done scanning you can save your localized area and then once it's localized it's going to tell you on the top right hand side if it's localized or not then i'm going to open the unity app that i created for this demo which we're going to be creating today it allows you to basically place starships around your area i have one that has a smaller starships one that has bigger ones which in this case is the one that has the bigger ones and then I also have a UI here that allows you to basically see the status of what we're doing, what's happening with storage. So in this case, I have three different ones that we created, and then we save those three to a storage. And you can see here in the log that it says that it was successful. Then what I'm gonna do next though, is we're gonna be closing this application because I wanna show you the persistent aspect of these spatial anchors. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it again. And you're gonna see that at some point in here, we're going to be restoring those anchors. And once we restore them, the cool thing about it is that we get the position and we also get the rotation for each one of the anchors that we save to a storage. We can also see the queries here that were generated when we actually request to restore the anchors from a storage. Next, go into this GitHub URL and then download the folders that I'm showing you right now. Once you get them downloaded, drag them and drop them into your project. Then we're gonna be setting up the logger and lastly drag and drop the ML rig into your hierarchy. All right guys, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go into the main camera. We're gonna be changing these clipping planes near to 0.25. And then if we go under the logger, it's also offset the position Y to be 0.1. And then on the Z axis, we can do 1.25, just a little bit further away from the camera. And then the next thing that I'll do though is go into file and then build settings player settings, go into permissions, and just make sure that the spatial anchor is already enabled, already enable it, but just make sure that it is enabled on your end. And then if we go under XR plugin management and then open XR, the Magic Leap setup tool already set up a lot of these things for us. So just make sure that you have the Magic Leap 2 spatial anchor subsystem and also the spatial anchor storage now we can go into the email rig and then right now we have the extra origin input manager air session but we need to add one more component which is going to be the ar anchor manager just make sure that you add that once you add it it's going to basically ask you for an anchor prefab i already have one credit for you and that's why we added this prefabs folder in addition to the learn xr folder and now some models so if you go under models i'll just show you what that is it's a pretty simple model of an arrow so we're gonna basically be testing that and then also testing how an anchor will look like with a little bit of a bigger a gigantic starship from spacex so i'll show you how that looks so we have basically multiple prefabs basically we're gonna start with the arrow so just associate the arrow that way we start with just a simple model small it's going to allow us to know exactly where it was placed and if it's restored as an anchor, then is it accurate enough? So that's what this is gonna show us versus the larger models that we have in the scene. So once we do that, I think we need to now implement the script that is going to place the anchor. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a serializable field and this one is going to be private and then also game object. This one is going to be the one basically holding the actual prefab that we're going to be instantiating. Then we're also going to have another one here. It's also going to be private. 
This one is going to be to get the controller transform position and rotation. So we can just say, this one is going to be a transform and we can just call it controller transform. That way when we use the controller, we basically place it right where the controller for Magic Leap 2 is going to be. And then for now, we're gonna have three different input actions. I'm gonna be changing this on the next demo, but for now, these are gonna be the ones that we need. So we're gonna have an input action property. So basically we're gonna be tracking what the different actions come from the controller. So this one's gonna be the bumper input action, and we're gonna be cloning this a couple of times. The next one is going to be for the trigger, and then the last one is going to be for the menu. And now we can just go ahead and hit enter here. And then we also need to get some information from the actual ML2 XR subsystem. So to do that, you can just add a reference to the ML and then there's XR, and then there's also an anchor subsystem. This follows the standards for AR Foundation that use AR basically subsystems also for VR. So this is just a standardized version of how they're binding behind the scenes. So this one, I'm just gonna call it active subsystem. You can be more explicit if you wanted to, but for now, I think this works. And this one, we're just gonna do a private, basically a public get, and then a private setter. Since it's gonna be the class that is going to be setting it, we can make it private. And then the next one is going to be to store all of the anchors. For now, we're just gonna be dealing with anchors that are local, meaning that these are the ones that we're not going to have any storage. The ones that are gonna have in storage are gonna be put into a different list, so we'll work on that next. But for now, this is gonna be basically a list of AR anchors. And then I call them local anchors. The ones that are gonna be in storage are going to be a store anchors. I'll show you that next. So for now, just basically just name it this way. This one is going to be private, just like we have it. And then we're gonna have this be a enumerator because there's gonna be some things in here that are gonna call into core routines. So like this one here, I'm gonna have to do a yell, return, new, and then wait until. So in the wait until, we're gonna be basically making sure that we have all the different subsystems loaded. So we're gonna have something called is magic lib anchor subsystem. I'm just gonna say plural because there's multiple things that we need to check for. And then let's go ahead and implement the meta next in here. So I'm just gonna say private, and then in this case, this is also going to be an enumerator. And then we can just do our parentheses here and then just go ahead and implement it. And we're gonna make sure that we enable them before we use them. I'm also gonna do the same thing here for the trigger. Just make sure that we enable it. And then lastly, we're gonna do the menu input actions. So we're gonna say action and then enable. Just call into those methods. And now we need to work on the, all the different callbacks, right? When those are executed, we need to call into different methods. So to do that, we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the bumper. And then this one's just going to be looking for perform. And then we can just create a method here for each one of them. And then I'm gonna rename them in just a minute. For now, we can just copy, paste, copy, paste. Gonna do the same thing for the trigger. And then the same thing for this guy in here. And then for the bumper though, I'm just gonna call this one, we can just rename it. And then I'm just gonna say, this one is called on bumper. I just like to keep this syntax or this naming convention when I'm dealing with, you know, with callbacks and the actions that get executed. So this one is going to be on bumper action, and then we can say perform, and then hit enter. And then it's gonna rename everything, but we'll have to change them here in just a minute. And then I'll do one for the trigger. So I'll just say on trigger. And then this one I'm going to say on menu. That way we can keep everything standardized. Let's do that here. And then we'll do the same thing here on the other two. So that's just going to allow us to capture input from, you know, when the bumper gets pressed, when the trigger gets pressed, when the menu button gets pressed, then we can proceed and, you know, and implement those three. So for the bumper though, we're going to be having those be the one that creates the anchors. Then the trigger is going to be the one that is going to basically remove the last anchor that we created. And then the menu is going to basically just remove all the different anchors. So before we implement them, I'm going to work on the create. I think that's going to be 
the one that is more important right now. So to do that, we're gonna do, let's go ahead and do a private. And actually let's go, let me go ahead and scroll up so you guys can see everything. So this one is going to be void and then create anchor and then just do parentheses there and then curly braces. So this is not required, but I like to use the pose. Magic Leap uses the pose when getting the transform position and rotation. You could have done it without it, but I'm just gonna use what they suggest. And I tested it without it and it works just fine. It's just a placeholder to store the position and rotation that we're gonna be getting from the controller. And then I'm gonna say controller and then rotation. So those are gonna be the two values that we need when we're gonna be creating an anchor. And then I'm gonna be creating a new anchor object. So this is gonna be just a game object at this point. And then we can say equal, and then we're gonna be instantiating. And then on the top, I have an anchor prefab. So that's going to be what we create. And then here we can say position and then pose rotation. And that should basically create an object that is at the location of the controller. And so we're just gonna add an anchor to it. So I'm gonna say new anchor and then new. And then at this point, we're gonna access that new anchor object that we instantiated, and then we're gonna be adding a component to it. In this case, we're gonna be adding an air anchor component. That's going to be the one that we need to create. So an air anchor is going to be a trackable object that is going to get updated with Magic Leap, right? So if we create an anchor in the, you know, in the virtual space or in their physical environment, that anchor is going to get updated, meaning that it's if the camera moves around, that anchor is going to stay in place. The rotation is going to be tracked. The position is going to be tracked. So it's just a point in a space that we can track and it can be persistent by adding the storage capabilities that we're going to be adding next. So next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add that to my local anchors. And then we're just gonna say, add this new anchor that we just added. We can add a space here, uh, enter just to keep it separated with the air anchor. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna log that that's what we did by using our logger from the LearnXR. We're gonna just go ahead and go here and then I'm just going to call that meta and I'm also going to be printing something else so we can just say instance and then log. If you don't wanna use my logger, I know some of you wanted to just use your debug.log so you can just replace what I'm doing with debug.log and then you can use the Magic Leap, basically device, connect to the device and then look at the log information and then just filter by Unity and you're gonna be able to see those logs too. So it's up to you how you want to handle that. For now, we're just gonna do this because I'm more of a visual person. I want to see it in the Magic Leap device. And then here, we're just gonna say, this is going to be basically printed when we execute the bumper action. And then we can say something like creating a new anchor. That way we can save more data. It's not really required to do that. But at this point, we should be able to create a new anchor. But I want to be able to remove an anchor when I press the trigger. So I'm just gonna do something very similar. Let's go ahead and move this up here. And then I'm also going to be printing something similar on this one. And this one we can say something like removing the last anchor. And then on this guy right here, we can say removing something like removing or clearing out, clearing, in this case, all anchors out, basically cleaning everything up so we don't have any anchors in the scene. Okay, so for the on trigger though, this one is gonna be very simple. We can just say, okay, do I have any anchors that I created? And we can do that by checking to make sure the count is greater than zero. And then we can just get the last anchor that was created and we can just do it. So I, I learned something about C Sharp 8 and there's multiple ways that you can do this. You can get the last anchor by saying local anchors and then getting the count and subtracting this because this is gonna be zero index. And this is gonna give us basically the last anchor on this array, or you can change this to be something like this and then one, and that's going to be C Sharp 8 feature that allows you to access the last, basically the last element in the array and if you want to get the not the last one but the last one of the last one basically you can do something like two and then three it's basically going to go to the end of the array and then go back 
So you can change which one you want by just changing this number. Just make sure that you use that symbol. So we're going to get the last one in the array by doing it this way. And then I'm also going to be destroying this. And the way that we're going to be destroying it, I'm just going to say, give me the game object, destroy that. And then we also need to keep our array clean. So I'm just going to say, remove the item in the array that has this specific index. So in this case, I'm going to say, okay, give me the index. And that's going to give me the right index and then removing it from the actual array. So, so, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and implement the one that deletes everything, right? And this one is very similar to the other one. We could just do something like if, and then make sure that we check the count. Instead of doing that though, I'm gonna go ahead and implement it in another method because it's, there's gonna be a little bit more coding here. So we can say clear all anchors. And then this one is gonna be fairly similar, except that we're gonna be clearing everything now. We can just say clear local anchors. And then we're just gonna say local anchors and go ahead and scroll up a little bit so you guys can see it better. So in this case, I'm gonna also check to make sure that we have anchors. And then all we need to do is we need to just call that method. So just gonna say clear all anchors. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new empty game object. This one is gonna be called anchor creator. And then for this, we can just go ahead and zero everything out. And then I'm just gonna call the anchor creator at that component. And then the prefab here, it's going to be the same one that we associated with the AR anchor manager. And then the controller, we have it here. So we can just go ahead and associate it. And then all these references, just make sure that you click on use reference. And these ones are pretty easy to add. So just make sure that for the first one, it's going to be the bumper because Magic Leap already had those in place in the SDK. You can see asset samples and then Magic Leap SDK. Basically the samples that we imported contain all those bindings so that we don't have to create them from scratch, which is great. And then we're gonna do the trigger here and then just make sure that you access the trigger. And then for the menu, we're just going to be doing that menu button in here. I want to show you how we can add additional information to each anchor, which is going to be very helpful for you to visualize what's available. So if you go into each one of these though, you're going to see that I have this placing a special anchor. And there's a reason for that is because we're going to be changing that as soon as we place it and basically display information that the ML XR subsystem is going to provide to us. So right now it just says that, just know that if you go into the anchor with rocket regular. You're gonna see that that one also has that. And then also the large one also has that information. It's a little tiny because this one is going to be gigantic. And I'm gonna take you to a park where we're gonna be placing this gigantic version. That way it'll show you how that looks. So let's go ahead and implement that. I'm going to go into scripts and we're gonna be creating a new script. So I'll go ahead and create a new one here and then C sharp script. We have private variables in here for TechMesh Pro, AR Anchor, Camera, and also the ML XR Anchor subsystem. We are getting all of those instances, and then we're also getting the Active Subsystem 
instance from the Anchor Creator instance, which is our singleton, and getting the Anchor ID from the active subsystem that magically provides. And there is a get Anchor ID that gives us that information. I can also get the Anchor Confidence from the, you know, from the Magic Leap subsystem by calling this meta. And then I'm basically populating all the information in here from all of those different instances. And then we're just basically making sure that the Anchor text is going to be looking at the camera so that we can read the actual Anchor information. We just need to access that new Anchor object and then add a component, Anchor State that we just created. Just make sure that you add that. That way we don't have to worry about modifying any of the prefabs. Instead of using the arrow this time, I'm gonna change things up and I'm gonna use the anchor with rocket regular. That way we can see a different model and it's a different size as well. And then go into the ML rig and I'm going to also change that one as well, just to keep things consistent. All right guys, so that was pretty fun to work on. So now let's work on one of the features that are really, really important. That is the storage part of an anchor. That means that if we store an anchor, then we can restore it as long as it localizes the environment. We went through basically mapping the environment at the beginning. So the storage part is very, very relying upon that information so that it knows where to restore those anchors at the right locations based on the environment that you scan. So, so there's going to be quite a bit of code, but I'm going to be explaining step by step as we go through it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be changing the anchor creator quite a bit. So we're going to start at the very top and then the new variable that I'm going to introduce is going to be a radius. And this one is going to be a query anchor radius. The reason why I call it that is because Based on the location, we can query the anchors that we are providing with a, within a specific radius. So if we have a controller, let's say that we place an anchor in this area and we know the controller position, well, within that radius, I wanna know what anchors are available. And the API that Magically provides gives you that capability. So I'm gonna say private float, and then in this case, I'm gonna call it the query anchor radius. And I made it a serializable field is so that you guys can test with it and play with it depending on, you know, how big your area is or how small, you know, it just really depends on the experience. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I need to get a new, basically a new component that is going to allow us to access the storage. So to do that, I can access, it's gonna be private and then magic lib. And there should be one thing here called a storage. There we go. And let me do that one more time. So Magic Leap is special anchors a storage feature. And then I'm just gonna call it a storage just to keep things really clean and easy to code and type. And then I'm also going to be adding a new struct that is going to contain additional metadata that is required to store an anchor. So I call it metadata, but it's basically different properties and attributes that are going to be stored along with the anchor. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be the store anchor. You can call that anything you like, that makes more sense. And then I'm gonna do this one as new, and then you long, and it's gonna have the anchor ID. It's also going to have a string here, and that string is going to be the anchor map position ID. So this is gonna be an ID that is basically referencing the map that has been localized, and then what the position ID is in respect to that map that was localized. So just know that this is what Magic Leap is gonna provide to us when we restore an anchor. So I'm gonna say basically position ID and then I'm also going to say public. In this case, I need to also store the air anchor itself. So I'm gonna say air anchor and then we're gonna say anchor object. And that should give us that information. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do though is on, the, on this list, I want to add a new list that is going to basically allow us to store all of those values. So I'm gonna say list, and then in this case, it's gonna be the store anchor. And then I'm gonna call this one store anchors, and then we can say new, and then our parentheses and close parentheses in this case. 
I also need a status of these two different lists because we're gonna have something called a control panel for anchors later on and gonna be using this information. So I'm gonna say, I wanna read this information. And the way that I did it in here, I'm just gonna say local and then local anchors is going to have a count. And then I also want to say, okay, what are the ones that are stored? And I also want to get accounts. So I'm gonna say local and then store anchors is going to be here. Just make sure you do count as well. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be storing the last created object for the anchor, basically the last anchor that we create, because as we drag, basically as we create an anchor, I wanna be able to move it around before I actually create it. That way I am more precise where I want to place the anchors. I'll show you how this is implemented. And then it works pretty well actually. And I had a lot of fun creating this. So let's create an object for anchor is what I call this. And then we're just gonna leave it like that for now. So the first thing that we're gonna be working on though, let's go ahead and go down here and then we're gonna start working on the, so this one is going to be a storage implementation methods, something like that, just a comment so that we know what storage methods we're going to be accessing. So the first one that we're gonna be working on is going to be our query, right? That's gonna be the first thing that we do. I mean, you can work on creating them, but I think querying them, it's going to be very important. That way we know, okay, what do we have available before we start the experience? And then in your experience, you can start creating them if you query them first, that way you can restore them and then show them to your players or to your users, depending on what experience you're going to be creating. So this one is going to be query anchors. And then I'll try not to make mistakes here as I talk and type at the same time. Okay, so this one is gonna be pretty simple. It's gonna be, okay, I wanna access storage and just make sure I do a not so that to make sure that we have this capability available. And it's not available if we haven't really enabled the permission or for whatever reason your device cannot activate this feature. That's, this is just a safety check to make sure that we have this capability available. And then the way that I'm gonna access this, I'm gonna say, well, control and transform. Can you give me your transform, your position? And then what else do we need to provide? Well, I also need to provide the radius, right? So we have these query anchor radius, and that's going to allow us to ask the query storage special anchors for all the anchors that are available within an area. So if this is not available, then I'm just going to go ahead and just show, show the user that this capability is not available. So I'm just gonna, log an error, that way the developer knows or the user knows that there's something wrong with the with this capability. There was a problem, we're just gonna say there was a problem querying, querying store anchors, store anchors, and we can do that. And then otherwise, if we do have this capability, then we can just say that we're logging, we're, we're querying these anchors. So we're gonna say in this case, I'll just delete this. And we don't want to do an error. In this case, we want to do info, right? So we're going to say in this case, querying anchors within a radius. And I'm just going to, I'm going to print out the radius here so that we have it available in the actual logger. So I'm going to say query anchor radius. And that way we can see that information. So, so you might say, well, Domer, where is that happening? Like, okay, this is querying, but how do we get that information back? Well, there are, there's something called callbacks when this is all asynchronous coding, right? When you deal with asynchronous coding, it's not sequential. It's not like, okay, we store whatever we, whatever came back from this variable into another variable because this is all happening behind the scenes and it's not going to return right away. So we need to basically work with callbacks. And in asynchronous coding that happens, there's a method that get executed after something completes so this is all built on top of that pattern. So just make sure that you bear with me, we're gonna get to that point. So the next part that I need to do though, is I need to basically call the callback. So there's gonna be a callback that we're gonna be binding to after all of these, that is going to be called on query completed. You can call this anything you like. I just like to keep that naming convention. So we're gonna say on basically on query completed. And then that callback is going to return a list of strings and that list, list of strings is gonna be anchor map position IDs. Again, all of these can be called anything you like. What is important in here is that it needs to have this type, right? And this can be anything you like. You can call it objects, you can call it IDs, but I'm gonna keep the namings here so that it makes more sense 
when you guys are coding. And then I'm gonna say, okay, well, I wanna loop through each one of those IDs. So I'm gonna say, give me the position IDs. And then in this case, I'm gonna say anchor map position ID, singular. That way you know that I am going through that specific ID in that list of IDs, right? And then we need to say here var, or you can say stream, depending on what your coding powder, you know, your preference is. And then I'm gonna say log info. We're gonna do our dollar symbol here for the interpolation and then on query completed. And we can say when this completes, I wanna basically display anchor map position ID. And then I wanna display what the current one that I'm going through, it's going to be. Okay, so so far we just know what IDs we're getting back, we're looping through and we're printing that information. Well, I wanna make sure that the next part, the next part is gonna be important because this method right here, when we query, once we query everything, I want to be able to create it from storage. But I, want, I don't want to create anything that was already created or that, that is already in the store list. So we need to make sure that we look and see what items are in this store list before we create a new one so that we don't end up with duplicates, right? So that's what the next part is gonna be for. So I'm gonna say in this case, found a store and I'm gonna say anchor match. And then in this case, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna basically look at the list and I'm gonna say where and the way that we do this, I'm gonna do this with link. There's many ways that you can do this, but I, I find that, that link is pretty, you know, it's pretty easy to learn and pretty easy to work with. And it also makes a lot of sense in my head. So I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna say, okay, give me, let me go ahead and hit enter here so you guys can see it. So what I'm gonna say in here is I'm gonna say, well, do I have any anchors that match that ID in my store anchor list? And if I do, then I should get values returned so we don't have to create them. But if I don't, then I wanna make sure that we create them from a storage. So the way that I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna say, well, I can do an auto operator here and I can say found a store anchor match and we can just access that by using any. So the way that this reads is that if I don't have any that match that criteria, then we can go ahead and create them. So I'm gonna say logger here and then instance and then in this case, I'm gonna say log info. I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna be creating, and what am I gonna be creating? Well, I'm gonna be creating this specific anchor ID, and then we can say from a storage. That way we can see what's happening, right? When we are working on this. Well, we know that we don't have it, so we need to create it. So how do we create it? So we're gonna say a storage. In this case, we can say create a special anchor from a storage. And then, well, what are we gonna be creating? Well, I need to pass in what I'm gonna be creating. So I'm gonna tell it, okay, what is going to be the anchor ID that I want to create from a storage? So that's going to be basically our anchor ID. And I need to say curly braces because we're dealing with uh, inline declaration of a list. So I'm gonna say curly brace here and then we can just close or actually not close a parenthesis, add a curly brace in here, there we go. So we're just saying, well, if I don't have it, then I need to create it and if in this case, if this feature is available, then I'm gonna go ahead and try to create it. And then at this point, well, if this feature is not available, I'm gonna throw an error so that you guys can see it. But after this point, there's gonna be another callback that is going to catch what happened with this. But I want to be able to, if I couldn't create it, not if the feature is available, if I couldn't create it for some reason, I want to display that information as well. So I'm gonna say in this case, we can say something like dollar symbol. And then we can say could not create the anchor map position ID. And then we can pass in the anchor that we tried to create that we couldn't create. So, so far you're like, okay, well, Delmar, you query to see if we had the anchor in a storage. We got the call back. We are now checking to make sure that we can create it. And if we can create it, okay, how do we create it? Well, that's gonna be the next part. So that call back is going to be private void on complete. We can say on complete creation or completed creation. Then in this case, we're going to be getting a post, we're going to be getting an anchor ID and some other information that we need to also use. So, which is cool because we're getting that from a storage, right? We're gonna get the post, so that's gonna be the anchor position and rotation. We're also going to be getting the anchor ID from a storage, it's gonna call it the anchor ID. We're also going to be getting the anchor map position ID. So I'm gonna be getting that as well. Just make sure you type a string correctly. And then we're also going to be getting an XR result, just depending on what happened. So we can just say XR result, and then we can just call this one 
result and then just do the curly brace and go ahead and basically scroll up so you guys can see everything. Okay, so in this area though, this is where we're going to be creating things from a storage, right? The, the other part was just saying, okay, I want to create it, but give me the additional information that I need to be able to create it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, if result does not equal to success, then I wanna make sure that, you know, I log that information. So I'm gonna say logger and then instance and then log error. And then in this case, again, my, my actual interpolation there, and then we can just say uncompleted creation. And then we can say results and just go ahead and print out the results. We can say result in here. So it's gonna give us a result and then we can just return because it was not successful. But if it was successful, then we want to create it. So the way that we're gonna create it, we're gonna say a store anchor and then new store anchor. And then in this case, I'm gonna say, well, I want a new anchor ID and actually we can do it this way. You can just say, in this case, new. And then we're gonna be passing all the different values, anchor ID. Well, we got that from the very top, so we can just say, well, I'm gonna store that. I also want to store the anchor map position ID, and that is something, something that we also get. And then we also need to get the actual object that we're going to be creating, but I'm not gonna get it just yet because we need to create it. So we can actually do it here, bar in this case. We can say new anchor and then equal to instantiate. And then we have a prefab on top, right, of what we're gonna be creating. We also got a pose, which is great, because now we can say, we can say pose that position, and we can also say pose that rotation. So that's gonna allow us to basically create our new anchor. And then I also need to start working on adding the appropriate air anchor components to it. New anchor component. And then in this case, I'm gonna say, well, I got a new anchor, and then I can add the component that we're gonna be adding is going to be like we did before, add an AR anchor to it. So I'm also gonna say new anchor and then I'm also going to be adding the component. So I'm gonna do the same thing that we did above. It's gonna be, in this case, anchor stay. That way we have our anchor and we also have our stay. So, so now on this component though, we can say, well, I want the object and the new anchor object is going to be the new anchor component. So make sure that you associate it to that. So now we can actually store it. So I'm just gonna say, grab me, you know, the list that we created above it and then add a new component and that's going to be our new store anchor. So now what if we wanted to publish a brand new anchor, right? This is something that is not in storage. It's just going to be a new one. So the way that I'm gonna do that is we're gonna do private and then I enumerator. And then in this case, we're gonna do, we're gonna call this one publish anchor. And then I'm gonna pass in the anchor that we need to publish to storage. And I'm gonna say to publish. So this one, it's going to be an enumerator because we need to wait until the anchor is currently being tracked. And then once it's being tracked, we can basically submit the request to storage and say, okay, go ahead and create a new anchor. So I'm gonna say while, a while loop, and we can say publish, and then we can also get the tracking state. So if this is currently not tracking, then we can basically just go ahead and you know return. So we can say yield and then return no. You can also wait a couple of seconds and then if you wanted to do that, I'm just gonna do yell return. And then we can say storage and then publish. In this case, we're gonna call the publish special anchors to a storage. And then this is gonna be basically, you're gonna pass in a list just like what we did above it. And it's going to be a list of AR anchors and I'm gonna do curly braces in here because we're gonna be passing in the actual anchor in line. And then we can also specify an expiration and this is, you know, you can decide if you want this to expire five minutes from now, 20 minutes from right now. For now, we're just gonna set it to never expire on publish and then complete it. And then if we were able to publish it, we're gonna get this information here. It's going to be the anchor ID. I'm also going to be getting the anchor map position ID. And that's gonna be the two attributes or properties that are gonna get passed into this callback. But now that we have that, we can actually create it, right? We're gonna say, well, in this case, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say logger and then instance and then log information. And I want to do this so that we know that this is getting executed. And as you guys can see, I like logging a lot because some of these things are really hard to debug. And in fact, they're not really easy to debug. So the more information I get, the better. The more information that you have, the better, right? And then now what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna go ahead and loop through the, the current local anchor count 
That way we can start moving the local anchors to be store anchors. That way we don't keep two different sets. We're just gonna keep one set. And that way it visually makes more sense because we're moving an anchor that it's not stored already to the store list. I'll show you how that looks as soon as we implement that part. So I'm gonna say greater than i greater than or equal to zero, and then we can say i minus minus. So again, we're always starting at the end of the list and then going to the beginning. Okay, so now what we need to do though is I'm gonna say, well, Aptive Subsystem, can you give me the actual anchor ID? And then the anchor ID that I'm gonna get is going to be from the actual local anchors. So this is so that we can loop through each one of the local anchors that we have, get the actual IDs, and then compare it to the one that we get, that we tried to publish. So I'm gonna say, well, if it, if it is in that list though, and we can say, add another parenthesis here, equal equal to anchor ID. And then we can, so if we do have it in the local, you know, in my local list, and it's the one that we try to, you know, that we try to publish, then we do have a match, so then we can go ahead and create them, right? Create a store anchor so that we can put them in the right list. So I'm gonna say a store, in this case, we're gonna be creating a new store anchor, and we can say new store anchor, and we can just do, we can just do what we did above it, we can just do new, and then in this case, we can just say a store anchor, make sure you remove those parentheses. So the first thing that I need though, is I need the anchor ID, well, it was actually passed in, we can just do that. And then I also need the anchor map position ID. So I'm gonna pass that in as well. And we can say anchor map position ID. So the other thing that I also need is going to be the actual anchor object. Well, we have that because we had it in our local anchors. Well, we need to pass in the actual attribute and then set it equal to the local anchors. I, that way we can, you know, we can set it to the object that we need to have that as a reference. And then once we do that though, all we need to do is we can just add it to our list. I'm gonna say store anchors and then add and then new, the new store anchor that we're trying to create. And now what we can do is we can remove it from our local list. So basically it's gonna go from the local list to the store list, local list to the store list. And then that way we can keep that sort of like a queue, right? They're trying to get processed and when they get processed, they get out of the queue. And then in this case, we can just say break because if we found it, we don't need to keep looping through the list. So we're always gonna start at the end and then come you know, to the beginning, like I said before. Okay, so that's going to allow us to basically publish an anchor. Once we publish an anchor, we're gonna get the call back and then we're gonna convert a local anchor to be the one that we're going to be storing. Well, we have these clear all anchors. I want to do something very similar that we did above it. That's why I did this one in a different order. Basically clear store anchors. I'm gonna do exactly what we did above it, but it's going to be with a different list. And it's gonna say, okay, if the store anchor count is greater than zero, then we can basically loop through all of them and then delete them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And then this one is going to be a store anchor count. And we can add a space in here. So the way that this one is gonna work though is I don't want to delete it in here because I wanna make sure that the callback is the one that is doing it because we did it right on the callback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, storage, and then we're gonna say delete a store a special anchor. And in this case, I'm gonna be passing in a new list. So this list is going to be basically one by one. I'm going to just pass in the current one that we're looping through. So I'm gonna say a store anchors and then we can pass in the current index value. And then we know that we have the anchor map position and that's the value that we can pass in so that the callback gets that value and deletes the game object and also removes it from the list. I'm going to say private void and then attach storage and then listeners and then curly braces. So this one is pretty straightforward. We're gonna say open XR settings in this case, we're gonna be basically getting the actual feature. So remember on the very top though, like we had this variable, but we never actually set it. It was right here at the very top. Magic Leap a Special Anchor Storage feature. So that feature is the one that we're gonna be getting. We could get it from the beginning if you wanted to. In this case, I only need it in this method. So I'm just gonna get it once this gets called. And this is only gonna get called once. So we can just get it this way. We can say, okay, give me the instance 
and then give me a feature. So the feature is going to be that long name that we have above it. It's going to be Magic Leap Special Anchors Storage Feature. And that's going to allow us to basically interact with storage, right? I want to bind to the on query complete. And the way that I'm going to bind to that is going to be with the callback that we implemented above it, right? Whenever we call the method to query them, so if I go and say storage and then query, that's something that we implemented above it. Well, the callback is going to be bound by using this callback, right? So that's how that's going to work. And then the way that I'm going to call that, we're going to go all the way to the very top. And then I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that we attach to all the storage listeners or callbacks at the end of the star method. I want to be able to move my hand around as I am basically holding the action, the bumper action to create it. And then once I let go of the bumper action, that's when we're going to be creating the actual anchor. So to handle that and do it that way, we're going to do it a little bit different. So I'm going to say in this case, when I say different, a little bit different than the Magic Leap examples. And the way that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, bumper action, I know when this is being pressed by accessing the action is pressed event from the new input system. And then I know that if the last created object, so now this is going to start making sense. If this is currently set to null, then I know that I can, you know, I can create it, right? So in this case, I'm going to say, well, last created anchor instantiate. And then what is it that we're going to be instantiating? Well, it's going to be the anchor prefab. And then I also have the controller transform position and comma, I'm just going to do comma so you guys can read it. And then I also going to get the rotation. So in this case, if the last created object is equal to null, I am going to create it. And then I'm also going to be setting the material color on this component to grape. So I'm going to say transform and then get component in children. And then I'm just going to get the render which is going to be the component that we're going to be accessing. And then I can access the material and then the color. And then I'm just going to keep it easy. I'm just going to say in this case is going to be color gray. So, so, so far, so good. We have, you know, we're holding the bumper action. And then if that's been, you know, it's on hold, basically you're pressing it. Then we're going to make sure that this is currently null before we create it. And then we're going to be basically just making sure that we set the initial position and also the rotation. And then if this is not null, then we also need to make sure that we update that position and rotation of that object. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, well, I already have this object created and then I have the transform and I can also say position and rotation all at once. We can do that by accessing the controller transform. I'm going to add the basically the position of that and then also the rotation of that. So this is just a way to basically move that object over time. And then as long as we haven't created it, and if we have created it, then we can just you know move it continuously and then rotate it continuously. So the first thing that I'm going to do though, is I'm going to add a new property, a new attribute here that is going to allow us to say, well, do you want this to be persistent or not? I'm going to set it to false by default, but you can change that to true if you wanted to. I'm also going to say, well, last created anchor. I know what that is though. So at this point, we're going to be executing the create anchor when we release of the bumper. So basically, if we go back in here to the bumper action, which I'm also going to have to do. So this one is going, is going to be renamed to be release a bumper action release. I'm just going to, going to go ahead and rename this. We can also do underscore here since we don't use that. And then this one, instead of doing perform, I'm going to say cancel. And then we can just rename this to be release. So whenever we release of the bumper, we know that we can actually create the anchor. So if we go in here though on bumper action release, this one we can't really just call it because we want to make sure that we did create it. So I'm just going to say, well, if the last anchor object is not null, then we can just say, okay, go ahead and create it, right? We have that already created because we created it in the update statement. So now Let's go ahead and, you know, and, and create the anchor. And then I'm going to pass in here. It's going to be persistent. So I'm going to say true.
Okay, so now if we go above it, I think we got everything that we need. There's a couple of things that I want to remove. So the, the bumper action release, I think that's fine. The trigger, I don't want to do, I don't want to do anything when I hit the trigger and I don't want to do anything when I hit the on menu action. I'm actually going to, let's actually do the on menu, but I'll remove the trigger for now. This method as well is going to go into a UI that is going to basically remove them all for us. So for now, we can just leave it in here, but I do want to remove the trigger action. Then we can remove that one. We can also remove these. All right, guys, so I think I found a bug in here. Just make sure that you change this to be get component in children, and specifically with the setup that I have right now. If you go under prefabs and you drag and drop this component, it's gonna give us this little component that I work on you know, in advance. And it already has a grab interactable here on one of the components so that we can grab it from the very top. It also has two different buttons in there. So let me make the gizmo here a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. It has one for restoring all the anchors, also one for clearing out all the anchors and also the status that we're gonna display, which is basically going to be how many we have on the local anchors versus how many anchors we have on the store anchors. And it's gonna be helpful when they move from local to store, local to store. Okay, so what I'm gonna do though as well is if we go here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this component and we're gonna make it a little bit smaller so that we can see everything a lot better. So the position here is gonna be 0.41 on the Y axis, we're gonna do 0.1, and then on the Z axis, I ended up just doing zero. And then on the width, we're gonna leave it like that, but we're gonna be changing here the scale. I'm gonna do 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. And then if you change everything here on the rotation to 0, 0, 0, it's going to beautifully align in front of us. The next thing that I wanna do though, is if we go into scripts, let's go ahead and create a new component. And this one's going to be the anchor control panel UI. So let's create a new C Sharp script. So I'm gonna call it anchor control panel UI. Bindings to the different buttons that we have on the control panel. Also the anchor text that is going to, the status text that is going to show us information about the counts of the store versus local. And then also a frequency because I didn't want it to update it every single frame. Distance from the camera is gonna be if we wanted to re basically reposition this control panel as we move around. Also these are two different unit events that we're going to be invoking from this class and anything that listens to them basically can execute whenever these buttons get pressed. I'm gonna show you how we can do that from the, basically the anchor creator. And then access to the main camera so that we can place this right in front of us if we call into this meta. It's gonna get the position, the new position that we need to use, that I decided to use for the, basically for this UI. And then we can change the UI position based on that new position. And then we can also make sure that it looks at the camera and we rotate it correctly. And then on a start, we're gonna basically be binding to the on click on the restore button, also on the clear all button. And then we're gonna be calling into these two different Unity actions. Then we're also gonna be getting a reference to the main camera and we're also going to have a core routine that is going to update the state basically of the anchors, which is going to get it from the anchor creator. And then on destroy, we just clean things up. So to be able to call into these, though, there's two things that we need to do. So first, we're gonna go back into the anchor creator and we're gonna be binding into those two different actions that we created. So if we go all the way up to the star meta, 
after the, it doesn't really matter where you put it, I'm gonna do it after the attach storage listeners. We're gonna say anchor control panel and then we can just access the instance. And then the first one that I'm going to be binding to is going to be the onRestore executed. We can add a new listener. And in this case, I'm going to say, well, whenever I call the onRestore anchors, I'm gonna basically query the anchors, which is going to initialize the, you know, everything to be able to query anchors and get those anchors back like we implemented before. And then I'm also going to do one for removing the anchors. I'm gonna say on clear anchors executed. And then we can also do, in, in this case, we can also say clear all anchors. That way we can keep things clean in here. I'm going to have that one reposition the control panel. So I'm just gonna remove this and say, okay, anchor control panel and then instance, and then we can say reset position, and then make sure that this anchor control panel has the right script. So if you go ahead and collapse everything, we're gonna be adding the anchor control panel here, and then we need to make sure that the bounds are bound correctly to the UI. So I'm gonna say restore all is going to associate it with that, and then clear all is going to be associated with that, and then anchor status is going to be associated with that. All right guys, so that was pretty fun to work on. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned today in regards to a special anchors or any XR topics, let me know in the comments below. And also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that I can let you know when new videos come out. Thank you very much for your time and happy XR coding.